Hey guys, it's Janet Gorski. In today's video, I wanted to discuss a guide that I have created to help you in how to write poetry and how to self-publish your own poetry book. If you do see me looking down a lot, it's simply because I will be referring to the guide. The guide is a PDF document, which is approximately 50-ish pages long. I won't be detailing the whole 50 pages in this video, but I did want to provide more of a high-level approach to help you. So get your pen and paper ready or your notes ready. Let's go. <laughs> Before I published my first poetry book, I was trying to find a comprehensive guide that I could use or benefit from. Finding none, I created a very rough version of this existing guide for myself and over time realized that others could benefit from it. To begin, I'll detail what will be in the guide. So there's an introduction, understanding the self-publishing process, getting started, read this if you're beginning to doubt. It's not funny, but I laugh because that's my favorite. <laughs> that's my favorite chapter. <laughs> Writing and editing, book title, formatting and design, illustrations and photographs, copyright, publishing platforms, marketing and pricing, what I did for my books, mistakes I've made and learned from, an FAQ section and a thank you page. The introduction essentially just outlines what you should be expecting from the guide as well as an overview of the guide. There is a key and across the guide I've added examples of my work to help you apply your thinking in whichever section you will find these examples. Additionally, there's a section that has prompt questions. I've tried to do that for each topic, again to help prompt your thinking and apply that to your own work. Okay, the first topic, understanding the self-publishing process. For me, who's quite task oriented, I wanted to provide not only what to expect in the guide, but additionally to help you watching this, what kind of tasks you should be expected to consider for the future when you're self-publishing. Self-publishing for me can seem very overwhelming when I look too far ahead. So what I mean by that is if I don't have a task oriented approach to my own work, I'll feel a little bit more anxious or stressed about everything else I need to do. That's why I added this section in the guide but I will talk it through with you so you also have some idea. One, concept development and planning. Two, writing and editing. Three, design and formatting. Four, illustrations and photographs. Five, copyright and ISBN. Six, choosing a publishing platform. Seven, uploading and publishing. Eight, marketing. Nine, sales and distribution. And 10, post-publication. So under all these, I've only written about two or three dot points, essentially detailing what to expect or what I suggest you focus on during these stages. The next topic within the guide is getting started. So clarify your objectives. In this section, I just encourage you to be honest with yourself and understand what you want from the concept, but additionally, what you want to actually write in your book. Research similar books in the market. Researching for me is paramount to anything that I do. The reason for this is because you can see so much more information and help provide you with more perspective that you would not have had had you not researched. <laughs> I also highly recommend you research during every single stage that you go through. This can also go back to how you prefer working. I'm quite a detailed oriented person, so I need to fixate on every, every little aspect, every word, every illustration, every dot essentially that you see within my books, I've thought about and there's a purpose behind it. So it does depend on how you actually want to work. Understand your audience. Understanding your audience is really important to consider the language you want to use as an example. Additionally, what kind of book cover you want to portray. Commit to a budget. So this can include hiring professional editors, software you might use. It's a great idea to consider your budget early on so you keep track of it and you don't go over because self-publishing can be expensive, but it doesn't need to be. Commit to a timeline or create a project plan. So within this guide, I have created a project plan and a progress tracker for you. I'll just refer to the guide. I added objectives for you, action and notes with a time frame section. And I did this as a draft. Everything that I provided in this guide is to help to prompt your thinking or just help you understand what should be expected of you next or what you can consider next. Prepare your manuscript. I love this part, <laughs> the writing part. Just write everything down, everything you want to say. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect initially, that's the beauty of editing and revising your work later on. As long as you know that you've added everything you want to say to that document. Choose a self-publishing platform. 
This goes back to me saying how research is very important. Just be prepared to compromise on things or if you don't want to compromise, make sure you understand what you actually want or what you expect from your self-publishing platform. An example of this is all four of my paperback books were published through Ingram Spark. I found them quite easy to use. However, when it came to publishing a different version of my fourth book, Chrome, I wanted photographs in there. I wanted the pages to be full gloss, a hardcover, really like a magazine or a polished publication. When I went through Ingram Spark, I found that the quality was not what I expected. So I had to go back to the drawing board and research and try to find a publishing platform that suited the requirements that I needed, that I was not willing to compromise on. And although the pricing was much more expensive for me, because I was not willing to compromise on the quality, I decided to go with a different publishing platform, which in that case was Blurb. The next topic, <laughs> read this if you're beginning to doubt. So earlier I mentioned that this is probably my favorite section. <laughs> it is my favorite because it's so easy to feel doubt or fear creeping in and that hesitation of, I don't know if I actually want to be doing this or why am I doing this? There's a lot of doubt that can overweigh your passion at times. But the reason why I wanted to add this section in here is simply because I don't want you to give in to that doubt. You need to remember that your passion is louder than the voice of doubt. Additionally, I think any creative can probably relate to this. Second guessing yourself can be part of the journey and can help actually provide you with more perspective. Something that I experienced when I had published my first poetry book, Bones, that was in 2019. I wanted to publish that book for three years before that. Don't hesitate. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Don't hesitate. The next topic is writing and editing. Under the writing section, I have high level tips on writing poetry. One, find your inspiration. Two, choose your poetic form and style. Three, select a topic. Four, express emotion. Five, practice regularly. And six, edit and seek feedback. It then continues into a section titled How I Write Poetry and under this section I have two different examples and dissections of poems. One example is a new poem that I quickly wrote to help understand how I can apply my thinking when I write my own poetry. The second example is a dissection of a poem from my fourth poetry book, Chrome. The entry I decided to use was Red Roses. I love that poem. <laughs> Something that I did want to note in this video that is also detailed in the guide is I always keep old versions of all my writing. That could be different revisions of my work, that could be notes, even the roughest notes that I don't ever want <laughs> anyone to see. I still keep those. The reason being is I know for me, these notes can actually trigger a thought process to create a different poem. And that has actually happened to me before. So something that I would recommend you do is hold on to all your revisions or just keep your old notes. Next three sections are finding your purpose to write, remaining authentic, and discover themes across your work. The editing section. I write about how to find structure within your work, sourcing a professional editor, which I highly recommend, getting feedback and reflecting on your work, and finalizing and preparing your work for publish. The next title is book title. I wanted to add this as its own topic within the guide, simply because people have previously asked me, why did you title it Bones? Why did you title it X? What's with Neon Sun? How is that about love? <laughs> and to me it makes sense because it aligns with the whole concept and the thought process behind it. But if you want something to be a little bit more black and white, these are just things that you need to consider. So I wanted to write about my perspective and how I came up with the book titles, but also to try to help you come up with your own. After I explain what the book title means, <laughs> in alignment with the concept of whichever book they had asked me about. But perhaps this is something you should consider if you don't want that to happen to you. For me personally, I really like that my book titles reflect either the concept or the thought, thought process or the depth that I have within my poetry books, but I know a lot of people prefer something a bit more black and white. So again, it's all up to you. Also goes without saying, and this goes across poetry writing as well as how you self-publish, the importance I want to stress is that you need to trust yourself through the whole process. Because if you do decide to seek feedback from peers, 
They may have opinions that will probably want to sway you if it is in alignment with your concept or something you just do not want to change. I think it's really important to still listen to yourself because this is your book and your voice. You know it the best. It's also something I love about self-publishing. <laughs> you can do anything you want. <laughs> the next topic is formatting and design. In this section, I have covered how I did my book covers and the thought process behind that. I've given all examples across all four of my books and I'll just quickly show you what I've done. So that's my first book, that's my second book. So I've done screenshots of each of my books. Again, I've detailed all of this because some of you do ask what I do and how I apply my thinking. So I really hope it benefits you if you do decide to go ahead with this guide. Before we move on to the next section, something that I think is really important to note here is to consider your future books. So if you have not self-published before and you don't know if you want to do another book, but maybe it's in the cards, please consider your future books. And what I mean by this, and I'll give you an example. <laughs> I published my first book. I wanted the book to be a small paperback because I felt that that was exactly what was reflected emotionally. And so when it came to publishing my second book, that was a hardcover and it was a bigger size. So then when I had both books together, one was small, one was big, they weren't the same size. Well, for me anyway, <laughs> annoyed me. When it came to publishing my third book, Neon Sun, I had to make sure that all of my books were in alignment. So what I had to then do is go back and publish the first book again, the second book again, to make sure that they aligned with the third book. The next section is illustrations and photographs. So do you need illustrations and photographs? No. This is not something I considered until my third book, Neon Sun. I think it's really important for you to heavily consider whether this is something that you do or don't want for your poetry, because I think illustrations and photographs can either enhance your work or completely take away from it. Some key takeaways under this topic is to make sure that the images are complementary to your work and consistent. To consider collaboration and placement and proportion of the images, as well as quality and printing specifications. So this then goes back to what we talked about earlier with your self-publishing platform of choice. Next section is copyright, but I will preface this by saying I only wrote about Australian copyright laws. There are two links in there that I referenced when I was doing the research for my books, I understand copyright laws are different across countries. So if you are not from Australia, I highly recommend, even if you are from Australia, I still recommend you research everything because although this guide is comprehensive, it is in no way, shape or form exhaustive. So I still want you to be researching to see what is best applicable for you. The next section is publishing platforms. Research, <laughs> sound like a broken record. Research what's best for you, tools and resources for decision making, and key considerations. Some of the key considerations when selecting your publishing platform could be the cost, the quality, the distribution, or the features. The next section is marketing and pricing. So full disclosure, when it came to marketing my own work, I didn't really do much, I think. <laughs> I only really started with my third book neon sun and i just used ads on facebook and instagram after that the only thing i've done is post reels and photos on instagram tiktok <laughs> maybe <laughs> and youtube and on youtube i've done poetry readings and dissections this is good great <laughs> create short impactful content be passionate and provide consistency under the pricing section, I discuss research and comparison, quality versus cost, my personal experience, to consider shipping costs and some final thoughts. So something I definitely want to touch on is quality versus cost and my personal experience. I did briefly mention this earlier, but for Chrome, I had four different versions of it. Two I published through Ingram Spark, which was the ebook and the paperback with my illustrations, and the other two versions were published through Blurb. And this was simply because I had to consider whether or not I wanted quality, but have to pay much more, or if I was willing to compromise on quality, but at a cheaper price. So the reason why I went with Blurb for the photograph versions of Chrome is simply because I was not willing to budge on the quality of the print. To give you an idea of the different pricings for the different versions, uh, Ingram Spark ebook, $7. 
paperback with illustration, $20. The next two were published through Blurb. Semi-gloss paperback with colour, $40. Full gloss premium colour hardback, $120. These prices were my market prices. These are not the prices that were given to me by the self-publishing platform. The reason why I wanted to be really transparent is it can be pricey to self-publish. I decided to hire a photographer, additionally a professional editor to edit my work. And I also wanted to buy the best software to use for this to make sure that the quality that I expected and wanted was impeccable. So, so while it's important to consider market price, I also think you should be really fair for yourself and the people that you've hired to make sure you're at least, like if you've spent this much, at least make this much. <laughs> the next topic is what I did for my books. In this section, I've outlined in a table specific actions for my book interiors. My books with no illustrations as well as books with illustrations and photographs. And essentially what I've done is talk about what and why I've done it and the software that I've used. I think probably if you're not interested in the details, the main takeaway would be if you are using illustrations or photographs for your print to make sure that the format is CMYK because RGB is for digital work, but CMYK is ideal for printing. So you have to change the format to CMYK to make sure that the colors don't shift as an example. Additionally, if you are doing illustrations and you want really good quality, I would suggest, well I mean this is what I did, <laughs> exporting it from Procreate, which is the application I used on an iPad, to a TIFF format. Additionally, the reason why I picked this format is because I wanted the background, I wanted the background of my illustrations to be transparent and the TIFF format could do that. Next section is mistakes I've made and learned from. <laughs> Another great section. <laughs> Let's discuss a very high level. <laughs> so doubting yourself or your capabilities, rushing your work, not reading through different publishing platform requirements, not considering future books, ignoring or not understanding formatting guidelines prior to upload, setting unrealistic pricing, buying too many copies of your own book. Some additional considerations are neglecting professional advice, overlooking print quality, underestimating production time, and not considering legal aspects. The main takeaways from this section is to research thoroughly, plan ahead, seek feedback, be patient. I have to remember that one. And market yourself. And the last section is an FAQ section. I tried to take some of the questions that I typically get across my channel and I additionally opened up some questions on Instagram and I've added some of those to this guide. The reason why I definitely wanted to add an FAQ to the guide is because there's a character limit on social media and a lot of the time I wanna provide a lot of detail but I feel like I can't. <laughs> so I think not just the FAQ section but this whole guide provides that detail. So if you are interested in understanding that detail from my point of view and perspective, it will be available on my website. The last section is the thank you section. And I thought that would probably be a great way to close this video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope my high level, I do hope the high level discussion that I've had also helps you. If you are interested to buy the guide, it will be available on my website. I'll put the link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.